that I was hired to, to sort of begin to frame what this whole thing would look like. And it began as a very small thing, and it's mushroomed into this gigantic $7 million project. And, and all along, it, we've been talking you know, about teachers and schools and what really happens with this. And now, finally, we have a school, and we're going to do it. and the Miami Museum of Science. And each one of those science museums partnering with a school in the K-8 range in their community with the goal to use telecomputing, the use of the internet and telecommunications to improve the teaching and learning of science. And specifically, to support inquiry-based science teaching and learning, which is what we try and do as much as we can here at the Franklin. This project is really gonna come out of you. And we really, everything that's, that's written in here is really just uh, some thoughts and some guidelines for, for how we think it might be and to provide as much information and background for you guys to say, how does this work in our school? And it's really all, all of what this project's going to be is going to be determined by how you take a hold of it and turn it into your own and use it to achieve the goals that you have for your classroom and for your school and for your community. So today, what, what I guess we want to do is we want to give you, you as much information as we can so that you can form the, the school improvement plan that, that, that includes this piece in your school improvement plan. I have a, a question I've been wondering about. You hear on television a lot about the internet, the internet. Is this internet the same internet, or is this a different internet? This, this is, is the better one. <laughs> no, this is it. I mean, so it's the same, when they talk about people meeting on the internet and talking with, this is the same internet, so that when we're involved in this, that, then we'll be able to access not only the other university, the other museums, but universities and all this other stuff. All Hundreds over. of thousands of places. Mm -hmm. Oh, they also mentioned this internet and several times on NBC News this morning. Now, are they a part of that, or were they just talking? Say a teacher wanted to prepare information and get information for a lesson plan or study guide, would they be able to access this from home? When you talk about accounts, you talk about email accounts and the internet. What is that? What is an account? How does it work? It seems to me that this is going to also involve some creative scheduling. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm wondering if, like for example, if I teach three classes of social studies, instead of doing three classes of social studies, would it be possible that I'm doing <coughs> social studies within my class and the other two seventh grade teachers' classes are working with me? Like in this hillside school, what's the average number of students in the class? And so it's a really powerful statement about the, the technology. What's cool is that the same thing's going to happen when people say, I'm really not going to be able to visit Levering School. I'll never be able to go there, but I can see it online. And I can see all the cool things that are there. And that's going to be very powerful. Wait a minute. It's the virtual Levering. You can make it look however you want. I want to give you a brief snippet of some of the kind of general thrust of the project in terms of the notion of inquiry, working with materials. The notion of the internet is, is will kind of emerge as the project grows, and particularly this summer, um, is in support of transforming classrooms, to making classrooms more student-oriented, more inquiry-oriented.
we're really glad to be here and to talk to the parents of the children with whom we hope to have a three-year relationship as we work together to see um, what we can do to show how an urban school can become an online school. And a lot of what's going to happen in our working with Levering faculty and, and with the students here in that is to do various things to promote good learning of science, inquiry if you will, asking and answering questions about our environment. And so we wanted to kind of convey that idea that it's more than just being on the computer. It's going to be hands-on experiences with real materials like these tubes, which if you did things like say, rub it a little bit on your clothing and then take your finger like this, you might see some interesting things happen. Uh, there are other things you can do. Yeah. Ultimately, what we'd like to see happen is what Wayne just did when he handed you those tubes. Um, if, if a teacher handed those kind of inquiry tools, basically toys to students in a classroom, they might begin to have questions about science. You know, maybe they'd wonder about that plastic, and maybe they'd wonder about the phenomenon that was going on. And then, in the same classroom, there would be a computer with access to the internet and in particular to the World Wide Web that they could then use as a resource to explore and look for answers to some of the questions that they might start to have. What have we done? That's not candid at all. Guess what? But I didn't lick it, but I touched the thing he told me never to touch. Anytime you do that, it's a little bit corner. Oh, who's dog? I don't know how he is. What does inquiry mean to you at this point? Can you find me elaborate on it? Inquiry can, can go all the way from having the question that you want to answer to having something presented to you and seeing how far you can go with it. Like uh, my, my, one of my um, electricity projects, the kids are learning the difference between a series circuit and a parallel circuit. And I'll let them, after they finish the basic lesson, if they have time, they, they, they collect stuff from everybody, as many people as they can. They get all huddled around one table, and then they try to see how far they can make that equipment stretch, how far it will go before the bulb blows out, how many batteries do you need before uh, uh, you can keep that series circuit going for a little bit longer time, how much time will it work using only one battery, and they go on and on and on. And if I, don't, and if I didn't have to change class, they might continue to go on and on. So even though they may have started from a, a question that was posed by the curriculum guide or by the teacher, right. they evolve, in using materials, they evolve into things that are of interest and are questions of theirs. Right. So it all begins to shift increasingly towards what we may call student, learn centeredness. Student centered um, um, questions. Mm -hmm. Or student centered learning. There's this notion of trying to find out <coughs> and increasingly that <coughs> shifting towards what I want to find out right. as opposed to what the teacher wants to find out. Exactly. Grade three, I usually follow the curriculum guide and all the objectives for third grade science from the process skills in September, October to interaction systems, the physical science, then on to earth science, and then to life science, okay? So they did work in groups um, and they had to use, um, you know, skills in observation and, and communication, not so much in measurement, but um, to look at four soil samples that, of course, were provided by Franklin Institute Kent, okay, most of us. Ready to begin? Let's do a voice check. Please, can I hear from the Exploratorium? This is the Exploratorium. Can I hear from Minnesota? Minnesota. Hello. Miami. <laughs> Boston. Hello, we're here in Boston. Last but not least, certainly, Amzi. Hi. On screen with you now is Joe Ellen Peterman, fifth grade teacher. Yay. And Joellen has something in front of her that she wants you to guess what it is. Is it liquefied wood? No. no. Is, is it living? Not right now, no. Is it a canned ham? <laughs> <laughs> With the kind of inquiry we're having, this project is going to be a smash. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you know, and I was thinking from the simplest to the more complex. That's where we should go with science. We start with simple stuff and we see how far we can take it. Right. I think that's what we should do. Just like.